Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming for another episode of The Young and the Restless that aired on Monday, September 26th. And yes, you know, on Deb Chanel's world, 48th world, we do soap opera reviews. I am so sorry that I'm so behind one week exactly on The Young and the Restless, but we're going to go on and get into it. Okay? We have Phyllis finally walk, wakes up and Ben tells her she's going to be fine. Then we have Jack comes into the club and run up against a rude, very determined reporter trying to get a story. Most of the story on Jack and maybe he's being domestic or violent to his wife, Phyllis, which is so absurd. Uh, then we go to Victor. Victor comes over to see Victoria, but runs into Travis. He's babysitting the kids while Vicky's at the office talking to Jill. Victoria comes in into the office to fuss at Jill about trying to hire Travis at Chancellor's Industries or Enterprises. Really just trying to get up in her, her business and send um, Travis off to Tokyo via planning that is business when it's really just trying to get Billy back in her good graces and getting them back on the boat of probably trying to get back together to solidify their marriage. Not going to work, Jill. But I don't know, it might, because Travis might be doing some sneaky snuff, uh, stuff with Victor later on by accepting a job offer, okay? But anyway, we go to commercial, we come back, Victor is playing with his grandson, Johnny, and make a small talk with Travis. Victor is saying, my wife tells me you're a good fellow, and I should get to know you a little bit better. She speaks very highly of you, and I know my daughter is very taken and smitten with you. Okay, Travis tells Victor, Jill, offer him a job. Okay, Jill and Victoria are fussing about trying to get her and Billy back together. Jack is still being harassed by the report at the club when Hillary and Devon walks in and see everything that is happening or transpiring between the two of them. And Devon saves Jack from the reporter. Okay, and his comments because Jack pretty much is fed up with him. But Jack no better. He ain't got no business talking to nobody. Not in his uh rage of a fit he's having right now about Phyllis, Billy, their love triangle, etc. Then we go to Billy. Billy's confessing his love still to Phyllis. I'm like, Billy, give it up. The ship has sank, okay? It's sinking faster than the Titanic did, okay? While she's laying in her bed asking about Jack. I mean, Billy, please give it up. She don't want you, man. She don't want you. Oh, my goodness. You're such a, a, a slop, a sappy slop for love. She don't want you, Billy. Go find somebody who wants you, babe. Anyway, we go to commercial. We come back. Victor's telling Travis he only wants his daughter, Victoria, excuse me, safe and happy. Victor tells Travis to be on the lookout for Billy Boy, to be knocking back at Victoria's door. Uh, you know, because he's alone and by himself, so he wants to always fall back to his good old faithful Victoria. And Victoria walks in the door and try to figure out, why is her dad here? Why is he talking to Travis? What is going on? You know, her mind's going a mile a minute. Uh, the reporter talks a, the reporter takes a bribe from Devon um, to table the story of 86, the story, kill the story, in other words. But Devon don't know he's being recorded. I'm like, Devon, I'm just watching the show as a viewer. And I could tell the man was sitting up there recording you. I mean, it was just too obvious. He set the camera right where he could get a good shot. Man, I would have uh, pushed that camera off the tape like, oh, did I do that? And then stomp on it. And then be ready to pay the price for a new camera. But he wouldn't have got no footage that day. Oh, no, sir. Agreed. He wouldn't have got no footage, okay? But get the First Amendment. Anyway, uh, we go to Jack. Jack comes home and remembers the time when Phyllis had her accident. And he gets all angry all over again. And then John Abbott appears, his deceased father. He talks to Jack and about the situation. They have a little small talk about forgiveness. Okay, then we go to Billy and Phyllis. They talk about life together, and Phyllis is saying she needs Jack, not him. I'm like, Billy, give up. Give it up, honey. Summer walks in and throws Billy pretty much out the door uh, with all her verbal 
bitterness, negativeness towards him. Peter leaves the room because he don't want to uh, stir up any negativity when it comes to summer. And with him being a bit catless, uh, probably setting the tone of why she Phyllis, her mom was in the hospital anyway, in a big affair, but you know, hey, Billy couldn't have an affair by herself. Phyllis was well into it herself. So, Sama, give up that. Keep blaming your mama because she was wrong. The only innocent person is stupid Jack. He always left in an abyss. But he's making up for lost time. We're going to have to give him a time to catch up. Okay? But anyway, um, he goes out the room, but quietly, but he looks through the door at Summer and Phyllis having mother and daughter time together. And she watches him, then she turns her head. <laughs> I'm like, Phyllis, you started this mess, so lie in your shit and get it together, okay? Um, then we go to commercial. Then we come back, we have Victoria sits down with Johnny and her father, Victor, on the sofa. And Travis is in the other seat making... Uh, observations of them, you know, talking with each other and, you know, being good with one another and, you know, just a caring moment. All right. Then we, uh, Travis takes Johnny upstairs while Victoria and Victor have, Victor, her father, have small talk about why is he over there, what he's doing, what he's trying to start now. Those nature type of questions. Jill comes into the club and have a rude well, no, I'm sorry. Jill comes into the club and have a rude run-in with Hillary and Devon. Devon tries to be the mediator between both women, but he know he ain't getting nowhere. But he do give uh, Jill some tea about uh, Jack had ran into it with a reporter. They got into it about, you know, the story of him possibly beating on Phyllis and trying to make a domestic storyline out of Jack being a scapegoat and you know Jack kind of got heated words with him he walked in he tried to defuse the whole thing and of course uh Phil I mean um Jill's blaming Phyllis but then she makes some kind of a pun uh of a joke that Hillary pretty much did the same thing she need to keep her mouth shut and you know her and Jill just finna get into it and Devon just got his wife took her aside you know wrestled her down when she couldn't strike um Jill, you know, with her hand or whatnot, and he just, you know, separated the women. They went on upstairs, and Jill was just having a drink by herself, drowning her sorrows in her martini, I guess it was. Um, then we have Summer and Phyllis are talking, and Phyllis talks about Jack and this, that, and the other. And Summer's trying to talk to her mom about giving Jack some space. He needs some time to breathe. You laid a lot on him. You remember you did have an affair with his brother, okay? That's why you're in the hospital, because you were sitting up there still fooling with him. When you know Jack was still volatile. But then you know it was an accident, because, you know, Jack just tried to pull his hand away. Well, you were trying to stop him from going and pack your bags so upstairs. So we know that came true. I'm glad you woke up and told the truth. So because Jack probably would have been in, in, in behind bars, you know, trying to figure out, now how the hell I get him? You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. And then we go to... um. Jack, Jack is talking to his dad about uh, Billy, which is, you know, John Abbott is his father. And he only sees his father when he's in great turmoil or he has to make a very important decision. He just don't know which way to go. John comes back, you know, as a, I want to say a ghost and sit and talk with him about what he can do. You know, I'm like, wait a minute now. Okay, so Jack's talking to his dad about how Billy did wrong. And that he is so tired of Billy. He's tired of taking up for Billy. He's trying to, you know, run his own life. And Billy just all in his life. Matter of fact, in bed with his wife, okay? Which is messing up his life totally at this point. And then um, John drops knowledge on his son and says, Okay, but you did the same thing when I was married to Jill. You uh, had an affair with her behind my back. Then you let um, Victor sit there and take my company that I work hard for away from you. And then y'all been having this vendetta against each other for, you know, forever and a day. And it's probably going to be to one of y'all die. Okay. But I forgave you for that, Jack. And there was two solid good points that Jack couldn't do nothing but swallow it and chase it down with some more spit. And, and then just like, okay, yes, daddy, you don't TKO me, knock me out, brought me back to senses, but I still don't want to be the bigger person. You know, and pretty much 
John told him to just grow up. Grow up, take the hit, and move on. And get the family back together. Get the family back together. Just forgive your brother Billy and let it go. Then Billy comes to the door. And oh, uh, wants to talk to Jack. He's telling him he's, he's sorry. And tell Jack Phyllis is doing well and she's awake. Okay, we go to commercial. We come back. We have Victoria telling her dad to please leave Travis alone. She knows what's good for her. Victor tells tells her she he's fine with Travis. He's just not fine with Billy. Okay. Then Ben walks in to tell Phyllis that Paul wants to talk to her about the incident. And Paul walks in, and of course, Paul wants nobody in the room but him and Phyllis. And Summer's just, you know, taking off Jack, saying, hey, the story's still going to be the, the same. Jack didn't do nothing to my mom. My mom could tell it, and she better tell it, or I'm coming in here and, you know, get her straight now. So she go on and leave the room while Paul and her mom can talk. Then we go to, um... Uh, Paul goes to asking Phyllis questions. He want to know what went on. Phyllis tells him it was all an accident. And that's all. Billy is trying to make a amends with Jack for Phyllis' sake. He's pleading Phyllis' case without Phyllis even knowing that Billy's over there doing that for her. John is in the room watching both his sons trying to mend their relationship. Very, uh, very nice. Okay, and then we have Billy says he's sorry again to forgive Phyllis. And move on with their marriage because he's taking himself totally out the equation. Okay, we go to commercial. We come back. We have Victor runs into Jill at the athletic club. Him and Jill have small talk about Billy and Phyllis. Victor tells Jill he don't want to see his daughter with her son ever again. Or there's going to be a misunderstanding. Then we have Billy comes over to apologize to Victoria and Travis. Victoria tells Billy Travis has agreed to move in with her. Billy said, I kind of figured that, but anyway, I don't mind as long as he's good to you and my kids. And um, Travis said he has no problem keeping that promise. Then we have Paul is talking back to Phyllis about Jack and the event. Paul is reassuring Phyllis if there is a domestic issue he needs to be concerned with, with her and Jack to tell him about it. Phyllis look at Paul like he's crazy, like, you are one sick puppy. Um... You know, he's telling him basically, get 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 out of my room is what she pretty much telling Paul because you're talking full nonsense, okay? Jack wouldn't hurt a flea and he sure, certainly didn't hurt me, okay? Uh, she go on and reassure Paul again there wasn't a crime or any assault and to close the case quick, fast, and a hurry. Then Summer's calling Jack to tell him to come back to the hospital to see her mom, Phyllis. Uh, Jack feeling some kind of way about it. He don't know what to do. I don't think he's going, but, it, you know, who knows? Uh, but he don't know what to tell Summer either. We go to commercial. We come back. We have Billy's upstairs happening and watching Johnny brush his teeth. And he's telling him a bedtime story while he's brushing his teeth. Uh, Victoria's having small talk with Travis downstairs about Billy's actions. She's thanking Travis for being there for her and her family. Billy comes down and says goodnight to both Travis and Victoria. They look sad at him because he's looking like a little sad lost puppy as he's walking on out the door. Then we have Jill and Victor still hanging at the club, still making small talk about their children. Victor's telling Jill, Billy boy has been replaced by Travis, so she, she need to give it up. But Victor and Jill come to the conclusion, and they both agree, that both of them are going to try to hire Travis to keep an eye on him. And, of course... Uh, how things go with Victoria. Who Whose child's gonna win, in, per se. Then we got Hillary still fuming from Jill's talk upstairs uh, in her Devon suite when they um, were downstairs. Hillary gets a text uh, that a GC bus reporter took uh, the story and published it anyway, and it had her husband involved, so they're looking at the news broadcast as it's uh, planned. And it's very well getting the bond in a sense where he just go around bribing people to make real stories go away. But anyway, uh, a rumor stories that's making his friend look in a bad light. Then we go to Summer tells Phyllis that she called Jack and from her tone of voice when she was telling her mom, Phyllis knew Jack wasn't coming to see her. Okay, then we go to Jack gets a hold of the GC Buzz reporter report special that was done on him. On TV, he shows everything where Jack was angry at the reporter asking him the questions. And Jack from Devon wanting the reporter to take a bribe or an incentive to just bury the story and not air it, 
you know, never let it come to uh, fruition where everybody can see it. Don't publish it. He wanted him to bury the story. And Jack and Yvonne goes ballistic uh, on the way the reporter handled things, meaning he still took the bond's money. He still ran the story. And then he made uh, <laughs> Devon have a bad look in the eye of the public as well as Jack. So that was the story of The Young and the Restless that aired for Monday, uh, September 26th. I hope you all enjoy it. I enjoy giving it to you. And I'm going to try to get some more out uh, before the weekend ends. But other than that, blessings and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.